Hello everyone. Today I'm going to read a story about named Katie Kazoo Sweet Zero. Anyone but me. It's by Nandy Dirk, illustrated by John and Wendy. Let's go. This is chapter one. I've got it, I've got it. The football soared down towards Katie Squirrel. She ran towards the ball, reached out her hands and whooped. He missed it completely. You took over Isaac again, Katie's best friend Jeremy Fox said. Jogging off to her, he pushed his thin water glasses higher up at his nose and ran down and threw his curly, right brown, cur- curly brown hair. I know, Katie replied simply. What else she could say? Katie, I can't believe you did that. Kevin Carmel shouted across the field. You lost the cold game for us. Just then, George Biron came surging up across the field. He had a big smile on his face. Katie groaned. Of course, George was happy. His team had just won the game. Thanks to Katie's fumble. Don't yell at the secret weapon, George told Kevin. A secret weapon? Are you kidding? Kevin asked. Secret weapons help win games, George. Exactly, George screamed. Katie's a secret weapon for our team. Katie blinked her eyes tight. She didn't want George to see her cry. Don't f- I forget about it, George. Jeremy whispered to Katie. She never gives up being mean. She's just born that way. Katie tried to smile. <laughs> Could be. She said. The truth was, Katie wasn't really sure why George was nasty to everyone in Class 3A. Must knew he tried to make friends, not George. To try to make enemies. Just then, Katie's other best friend, Susan Locke, uh, ran across the playground of them. Let's try to get monkey birds for a while. She suggested pulling Katie and the journey around the George. I'll bet I can hang upside it longer than either of you. Katie stared at Susanne. Her friend was wearing a skirt. You were going to turn upside down in that? Katie asked. Sure, sure, Susanne said, yanking over her skirt to the belly button. Katie's mouth flew up and Jimmy flushed. It's okay, you guys, Susanne left. See, I'm not wearing shorts under there, under here. This a way can I a way I can wear a skirt and still play. Katie laughed. Leave it to Cezanne to find that a long way to look pretty and still hang upside down to the jungle gym. Okay, last one is the monkey bird rotten egg. Katie's girl and dashed away. Cezanne and Jeremy took over Katie. Katie held on to her lead, but not for long. Jamie was the fastest runner in class. He quickly pulled off the next to Katie. Katie took a deep breath. She moved her feet faster than over, but not fast enough. Jamie zoomed into the lead. Katie frowned. Well, at least she was ahead to Susanne. Katie turned her head to see how far behind and Susanne was and splat. Katie stepped around in a big wet puddle. Gushed around a big mud flash all over her. Katie stumped running and locked down her jeans. Oh no, she cried out. What a mess. Katie wasn't kidding. She was a total mess. There was a mud spattle all over the jeans. Her favorite jeans. The one a set of pink and blue flowers adorable all over them. If that was the first grade, Katie wouldn't have been changed their clean clothes in a cubby. But Katie was in third grade now. Nobody third grade changed happiness clothes in a school. That was for babies. Katie was going to wear this mud stained jeans for a whole rest of the day. Nice one, crow. George shouted across to the yard. Check it out, everybody. There's a mon monster on the playground. George stuck his arms and straight out walked to the yard pretending to be Frankenstein. The other kids laughed. 
Katie wanted to cry. This was the worst recess ever. She was the Miss Darkman would blow her whistle and make everybody go into the class. Even during school, we had better to be than this. George, go away, or I'm gonna tell. Susanna warned the one defeated friend. A big smile formed George Cubby. A round face. Yeah, I'm like a real scare. He left in well pretend chamber. <laughs> What Miss Jugman going to do? Come on, mommy. Katie and Susanna cursed Sergeant Jules in amazement. She didn't call the teacher Mr. Eggman a mean name, and he hadn't even whispered it. She didn't seem scared. All old teacher found his mommy there before Katie and Susanna could answer to George. Miss Darkman blew her red whistle three times. Phew! Recess was over. It was time to get back to the class. Katie was very glad. She used her hands to wipe off some of the mud, and then ran out of the lineup. "You okay?" Jimmy whispered to Katie. "I guess," Katie replied. "George is a creep, you know that." Katie nodded, but knowing that was not going to make George stop calling him mud monster. He probably go with it all day. Unless, Katie couldn't wait for Mr. Tusman to ask him for something embarrassing that afternoon. Then maybe George Bernard could tease his kid instead. It is chapter two. This is for you, Kevin whispered to Katie. She handed over note. This is writing a roll of blue paper and a folded up real small. Katie blew it was for Sadani. Her nose always looked like that. If you had the answer for her, send it to herself. Kevin told Katie. I don't want to get in trouble again. <clears throat> Katie understood. Kevin said that the desk right be between Susanne and Katie. He always found him passing notes from girl to girl. Yesterday, Miss Dugman had caught Kevin passing a note from Katie to Susanne. Kevin, Ke- Kevin had a. Kevin had had to write an apology note to Miss Darkman. Katie unfolded the paper. Do you want to come over after school? The road read. Katie scribbled down the answer to the bottom of the note. No thanks. I have to go to home and change. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Katie tossed the paper around on Kevin's head. It landed on Susanne's desk. Katie crossed her fingers, hoping that Miss Darkman didn't see. Katie locked out. Miss Darkman didn't notice a fly note. He was too busy writing on the barrel. Okay, take out your pencils and math notebooks. Today we're going to review some traction and without borrowing. The teacher announces. Kid gulp. Whatever the Miss Darkman said, the word review. It means that he was going to ask Monday the kids from the class to go board and solve the problems in front of everyone. Kid slid down a load of his chair, hoping Miss Darkman wouldn't notice her. He didn't want to be in over the keys to call out. That it wasn't Katie's good friend subtraction without borrowing. This is more than he hated to be in front of the whole class. I will try when this Mr. Dirkman says any volunteered. Katie signed. So Danny never worried about making mistakes of a whole class. She just liked being center of attention. Katie wished that he could be more like that. But today, Mr. Dirkman didn't ask Susanna to come off the board. She peeked in Andy Brooks, so center and German instead. German went at first. He whizzed through the problem. No surprise, Sarah was supposed to like computer. Then we came to the math. Then it was Joe's turn. All right, Zoe, says Miss Bergman to Zoe after the cold. What will you get when you when you subtract one hundred fifty two from nineteen hundred one? The wrong answer, George. Joke out loud. Some keys in the cast bed. Joe blushed. Katie girl is really mean and was dr- just to joke around like that. Everyone knew Joe had a lot of trouble with mess. Then at this, Miss Jeremy looks stern over to George, but she smiled at George. Go ahead, she said to her. We'll do it together. When it was time to turn, Jeremy took his time in solving the instruction. Subtraction problem. Katie smiled. It was Jeremy, slow and steady.
like a tortoise around the ring, story of tortoise and the hare. Sometimes girls care for slowness wouldn't get time for an annoying, kind of annoying. But not today. As long as Jeremy's up there, Miss Dirkman won't call me. Katie thought to herself. But eventually, Jeremy did have a problem. He got the right answer as usual. Mister and Miss Maldon wrote in another math problem. On the board. Let's do one more, she said. Katie sung even lower the chair. She leaned her presently resting down on the desk, but no use. Mister Man saw it anyway. Katie, will you serve this for us? The teacher said. Katie signed. She stood up and slowly walked to the bowl. Here comes the man monster. Katie heard the girls whisper to the walk and pass at the desk. Katie didn't want to get to prison charge, but she had no chance. She sat up in the rear and in front row where Miss Dogman could leave her eyes on him. Katie reached the board and pick up. Katie reached the board and pick up the piece of yellow chalk. She opened her mouth and take a deep, calming breath, but. But instead of breathing in the air, she let out the big blatch. It was the loudest burp she's ever heard. A real record beaker. The other kids cl- began to laugh. Katie blushed her beet red. I'm sorry. She applauded to Miss Stark to Miss Darkman. Katie didn't want to teach her to think of Donald on purpose. Out of the corner of the eye, Katie could see George holding a nose. He was pretending from the dye to held up the breath. Kate is stinking up in the classroom, George exclaimed. George exclaimed. She laughed so hard, she nearly fell off his chair. This is done about today's story, Katie Katz's Swizzer Zizzo. And one by me. By Nancy Clock, illustrated by John Wendy. It was Ariana. Thank you for listening, and see you next time. Bye!